Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Lepakshi Kurana. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Monday, the 4th of November. Indian PM Modi attends RCEP and East Asia summits in Bangkok. Pakistani Islamists continue protest demanding PM Imran Khan's resignation. A Nepal president removes governors of all seven provinces. And now for all the details, Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Monday participated in the Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership and East Asia Summits in Thailand's capital, Bangkok. Prime Minister Modi is on a three-day visit to Thailand to attend ASEAN, East Asia and RCEP summits aimed at boosting regional ties. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Monday participated in the Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership or RCEP Summit in Thailand's capital, Bangkok. RCEP is a comprehensive free trade agreement being negotiated between the 10 ASEAN member states and ASEAN's free trade agreement partners Australia, China, India, Japan, Korea and New Zealand. Prime Minister Modi earlier attended the 14th East Asia Summit in Bangkok. ASEAN and regional leaders joined in the annual gathering where discussions were held on various developments in the region. Prime Minister Modi outlined global challenges facing the world today and highlighted the need for working together to find common solutions. The agenda of the summit was to review the future direction of East Asia Summit cooperation and exchange views on regional and international issues. Indian Prime Minister on Sunday presented a brief blueprint for further expansion of India's multi-sectoral engagement with the ASEAN. In his opening address at the India-ASEAN summit, the Prime Minister said enhancing surface air maritime connectivity between India and 10 nations of the bloc will significantly boost regional trade and economic growth. Pollution levels in Indian capital New Delhi and its neighboring regions peaked to a three-year high with thick blanket of smog engulfing several parts on Monday. Delhi government's odd even car rationing scheme based on license plates began on Monday in a bid to control the worsening air quality. Indian capital New Delhi was again shrouded in heavy smog on Monday as the air quality continued to deteriorate. Pollution levels in Delhi and national capital region has peaked to a three-year high with thick blanket of smog engulfing several parts of the region. On Monday morning, the overall air quality index or AQI in Delhi was still in the severe category. Several flights were diverted and delayed due to poor visibility at the Delhi airport. Authorities in the world's most polluted capital city has already declared a public health emergency and ordered the closure of schools. दिवाली से पहले एक दिन से साफ था उसके बाद इतना बढ़ गया है कि उससे पहले हम डेली करते हैं वॉकिंग रनिंग वगैरह लेकिन उससे पहले जितना आराम से करने होता था अभी दिक्कत हो रहा है जैसे कि जलन टाइप का हो रहा है शरीर में नाक में मेन वाइल डेली गवर्नमेंट्स और इवन स्कीम बेस्ड ऑन लाइसेंस प्लेट्स केम इन टू इम्प्लीमेंटेशन फ्रॉम मंडे विद चीफ मिनिस्टर अरविंद केजरीवाल urging all citizens to use carpooling in order to control the deteriorating air quality in the national capital. Odd even today is the law that is why 15 lakh cars will be closed on the road. So, when 15 lakh cars will not come on the road, it will be less than the pollution. And I am very happy that all the reports are in the morning in Delhi. The people are increasing in the morning and the odd even are participating in the odd even. Restrictions for odd even scheme aim to curb domestic carbon emission will be applicable from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. and will continue till November 15th. It will not be effective on Sundays. The car rationing scheme will, however, not be applicable on two-wheelers, vehicles being used for medical emergencies, for women and vehicles carrying school children and electric vehicles. 
One person was killed and at least 14 injured on Monday in a grenade attack in Srinagar city of India's Jammu and Kashmir. The blast took place in a marketplace in the center of the city. Security forces immediately cordoned off the area. An eyewitness said that the man selling toys at the time of the blast died on the spot. The injured were rushed to hospital with two of them in critical condition. The incident comes just a week after at least 20 people were injured when terrorists lobbed a grenade at a bus stand in support town of Jammu and Kashmir. India accuses neighboring Pakistan of aiding terrorists to spread unrest in Kashmir Valley. Pakistan, however, denies the allegations. In news from Pakistan, thousands of Islamist protesters under the banner of Pakistan's jamaat e ulema e islam Fazl and other opposition parties continued their sit-in protest on Monday in Islamabad, demanding resignation of Prime Minister Imran Khan and his government. Thousands of protesters under the rallying banner of jamiat ulema e islam Fazl or JUAF party and other opposition parties on Monday continued to converge in Pakistan's capital Islamabad for the fourth day, demanding that Prime Minister Imran Khan and his administration resign. Spearheaded by JUIF Chief Molana Fazlur Rahman, the Azadi or Freedom March is the first concerted opposition challenge that Imran Khan has faced since he won a general election last year. The political strife comes as Khan's government is struggling with the economy. Khan won the election on promises of breaking Pakistan away from its legacy of corruption and to create jobs for the poor. We have come here, we have brought us with us, we have brought us with us. Maulana, when we say that, we will stop, we will say that, we will say that, we will say that, we will say that, we will say that. The opposition says Imran Khan's government is illegitimate and is being propped up by the military, which has ruled Pakistan for about half of its history and set security and foreign policy. The military denies meddling in politics and Khan has dismissed the calls to step down. A news from Afghanistan, Afghan authorities on Sunday burned about 28 tons of seized narcotic drugs in northern Baglan and southern Helmand provinces. The illicit drugs were confiscated by counter-narcotics police of Afghanistan and other security organizations within the past one year. Authorities in Afghanistan burned about 28 tons of seized narcotic drugs in two provinces on Sunday, the latest in the fight against illicit drug trafficking. Some 15 tons of narcotics were put on fire and destroyed by provincial police in the northern Baglan province and about 13 tons of drugs were demolished in Lashkarga, capital of southern Helmand province. The illicit drugs were confiscated by counter-narcotics police of Afghanistan and other security organizations in the two provinces within the past one year, the officials said. In 2018, some 6,400 tons of poppy opium were produced in western and southern parts of the country, where security forces have little presence, much lesser compared with 9,000 tons in 2017, according to official figures. Afghan government has long tried to fight against illicit drug trafficking in the country, especially of opium. The authorities have been tried coaxing farmers into switching to legal crops, but they make profit out of poppy and even the Taliban takes a cut in exchange for protection of farmers' poppy fields. The group also helps poppy farmers sell the illegal produce. In a major development, Nepal President's office removed the governors of all the seven provinces in the country on Sunday who were appointed by former Prime Minister Sher Bahadur Diyabar led government. According to a press statement issued by the President's office, the governors were relieved as per the constitutional provisions on the recommendation of the Council of Ministers. A cabinet meeting was held in this regard on Sunday. The governors were appointed in January 2018 after first ever provincial elections in the Himalayan nation. The elections for the seven provincial assemblies were held in two phases in November and December of 2017.
ASEAN leaders held a summit with the United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres on Sunday where he expressed concern over the plight of Rohingya refugees and urged Myanmar to take responsibility to address the root causes of the Rohingya crisis. United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres expressed concern on Sunday over the plight of the 730,000 Muslim Rohingya refugees from Myanmar's Rakhine province, calling on Myanmar's government to take responsibility by dealing with the root causes of their flight to Bangladesh and working towards their safe repatriation. The UN chief spoke on the sidelines of a summit of the Association of Southeast Nations or ASEAN, attended by Myanmar State Councillor Aung San Suu Kyi, whose government's relations with the United Nations have been strained over the Rohingya crisis. About 730,000 Rohingya Muslims fled from Rakhine province into Bangladesh during a military crackdown in 2017 after Rohingya insurgents attacked security posts. And I remain deeply concerned about the situation in Myanmar, including Rakhine state, and the plight of the massive number of refugees in Cox Bazar still living increasingly in difficult conditions. It remains, of course, Myanmar's responsibility to address the root causes and ensure a conducive environment for the safe, voluntary, dignified and sustainable repatriation of refugees in accordance with international norms and standards. Although Myanmar's government says it has tried to encourage refugees to return, the refugees say they will not go back unless their security can be guaranteed and they can be sure of being granted citizenship. Sri Lankan presidential candidate Sajid Premadasa has once again challenged his main contender, Gotabaya Rajapaksa, for a public debate. The presidential poll in the island nation is slated to be held on November 16th. Sri Lanka's housing minister and presidential front-runner Sajid Premadasa has written to his main opponent Gotabaya Rajapaksa, renewing his challenge for a public debate. In a letter posted on Twitter, Premadasa pointed out that it was the democratic right of the citizens to be well informed about their choice of presidential candidates. There is no tradition of live debates among presidential candidates in the country, but Premadasa wrote, Presidential candidates fearlessly debate their policies at impartially moderated debates in modern democracies around the world. He said it has been 10 days since he first challenged Rajapaksa and asked him to respond to the challenge. There has been no immediate reaction from former wartime Defence Secretary Gotabaya or his party, Sri Lanka Podujana Peramuna, but they had earlier called for written communication to consider the issue. A total of 35 candidates are in fray for the presidential election, scheduled to be held on 16th of November. Hindu devotees across India celebrated the Grand Chhat Puja festival by praying to the sun god on Sunday. The four-day festival holds a significance for married women who observe fast and stand in waist-deep water and present religious offerings to the sun. Hindu devotees in India celebrated the Grand Chhat Puja festival by praying to the sun god in the wee hours of Sunday across the country. Chhat Puja, the four-day festival, holds significance for married women who observe fast and stand in waist-deep water and present religious offerings to the sun god. In northern Varanasi city, devotees gathered on the banks of Holy Ganges River where women stood with ritualistic items as part of the tradition during the festival. The sun is considered the god of energy and life force in Hinduism. The festival of Chhat Puja is dedicated to the sun god and his consort Chhati Maya. Chhat also involves a tradition where women devotees apply vermilion on each other's forehead. The orange color in vermilion symbolizes sun and it is believed the longer the vermilion mark, the longer is the husband's life. The festival which has now gained popularity in many metropolitan cities of India like New Delhi, Kolkata, Pune and Mumbai is considered the most significant and auspicious festivals of northern Bihar province. 
Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianNewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianNewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianNewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.